Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a good week. This week in level F, we're going to be covering lessons 77 through 80, and you'll need worksheets 65 through 67, the Casio calculator, the math card games book, the basic number card deck, and the multiplication card deck. In lesson 77, we will solve volume problems. Today, the warmups are oral. So once you've done those questions, have your child read problem number one on the worksheet and think about how to solve the problem. Go ahead and discuss possibilities before having your child um, look at the solution or actually solve the problem. So let's take a look at how we would solve that problem. Okay, real briefly, the uh, problem says that there's 48 math card game kits and they need to fit into shipping boxes. And we want to know how many shipping boxes we will need to ship the order. So first we're going to find the volume of the each game kit box. Okay, so I'm going to write volume and then game so that we know which one we're talking about equals, remember the capital B is the area of the base times height. So in this case, the area of the base is determined by multiplying 12.5 inches by 12.75. So that's the area of the base. And then we're gonna multiply by three, which is the height of the box. Okay, and when we do those calculations, we come up with 478.13. We're gonna round it to one, because three is smaller than five, and that's inches cubed. Okay, so the capital B, the area of the base was determined by these two numbers here, and then we multiplied by the height. Okay, the next step is to find the volume of the shipping boxes. That formula is also capital B times H. And in that case, the base measures 12 inches by 25 inches. So I'm just gonna go like this. You don't have to do this when you're writing your equation out at all. I'm just doing it so that you can see the connection. And then the height is um, 38.25. So when we multiply all three of those numbers together, we get 11,475 inches cubed. So to determine the number of boxes, of game boxes that will fit into each shipping box, we say N, that's gonna be for number, the shipping answer here, so 11,475 divided by the volume of the card game boxes. That's this number here, all right? And our answer is 24. So that means that there's 24 game boxes in each shipping box. And remember, we had to ship 48 boxes. So we're going to need two shipping boxes to get the order to whoever ordered 48 game kits. So next, I wanted to show you something in problem number two. So we're on the second page. Here's problem number two. Notice it says each balance is in a box that measured th three inches by two and three quarter inches, okay, by 26 and a fourth. And then how many boxes of math balances can Lori and Sharon lay flat in a bin that is 26 and a fourth inches long, four feet wide by two and three fourths feet tall? The reason why I'm pointing this out is because my son was doing this problem and he read this as two feet and three quarters of an inch. I, I don't know why, it was just one of those days. But I wanted to point that out in case anybody else's child does that and you're wondering, what the heck, how did they get the answer wrong? It's because 
um, that's three fourths of a foot. So in fact, the measurement is 2.75 feet, which in inches is 33 inches. And I think what my son got was 24.75 inches because he read it as three fourths of an inch. So that's just a little heads up in case you happen to have a child like mine who just read it too quickly. Okay, so that's a pretty short worksheet. Um, now you can ask the in conclusion questions and play multiplication card speed, which is game P31. There is a video about this game on the Right Start website. So of course I'll leave a link to that. Lesson 78 is an assessment review. So please have your child take the review and then discuss the solutions. Um, and here are a list of the lessons that you can review if your child missed any of the questions. Okay, if your child missed the oral questions, let's look at those first. If they missed question number one, review lessons 24 and 26. Question two, review lesson three. Question three, review lessons 20 and 21. In the write the answers section for the first one, review lessons uh, lesson 58, for the second one, lesson 42, and for the third one, lesson nine. In the do the calculations section, um, for the addition problem, you can review lesson 26, the subtraction problem, lesson 27, the multiplication problem, lesson 33, and the division problem, lesson 49. In the match the names to the formulas, go ahead and review lessons 66 and 67. For the find the area of the figure, review lesson 70. And for the evaluate the following expressions, review lesson 15. On the second page, um, if your child missed the rounding problem, review lesson 30. The place these numbers from smallest to largest section, review lesson 31. Match the square roots to their values, review lessons 58 and 59. Um, for the one that says figures A, B, and C are squares, so you're using the Pythagorean theorem, review lesson 60. For the solve the problem question, review lessons 28 and 29. The find the area of a parallelogram review lesson 68. And for how many little cubes or the volume problem, review lesson 73. Lesson 79 is game day. Um, and this day is really intended to review the concepts learned so far. Go ahead and ask the warm up questions. And then there's three games to play. The first one is Crazy Squares Game, which is P23 in the Math Card Games book. There is also a video on the Right Start website. Then the next one is Square Memory Game, which is P21 in the Math Card Games book. And then the third one is Quotient and Remainder Game, which is D7. There is also a video for this game as well. Lesson 80 is the actual assessment that we've been preparing for the last two lessons. Your child will most likely do very well on the assessment if you went, if you went over whatever mistakes they made on the review lesson, then most kids are going to be just fine going into this assessment. However, if your child is still struggling with some of these concepts, I would try to incorporate those particular problems into the warmups, maybe even replace the warmups with those problems if there's a, a lot of them, um, in the following lessons. So just revisit the problems that they were having issues with every day um, to give them more practice on that. And also spend more time on games that are covering those concepts. You can also pause and take a few days to just play games, but try not to stall the progress. So, you know, a few days of just playing games is fine. And sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's what we all need. And sometimes it gives the kids time for the information to gel in their brain. That's what I found is sometimes if I would just take a break, the new information had time to just settle in and then all of a sudden they understood it. So don't worry about that. Don't think, oh, I'm getting behind or anything. It's okay to go at the pace that your child needs. Just don't dwell there on that lesson or those lessons for a long period of time. You wanna keep the momentum going. Okay, that's all for this week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.